Not a star, not a planet, but somehow hotter than the sun? This cosmic enigma will leave you questioning everything you know about the universe. Stick around, because we're diving into the fiery world of objects that defy classification. The universe is full of mysteries, and today we're unraveling one of the most fascinating ones. Imagine an object that's too small to be a star, but too big to be a planet. An object that challenges everything we know about how celestial bodies form and behave. These are brown dwarfs, often referred to as failed stars. Despite their name, there's nothing small about their story. Some of these objects burn with temperatures that put even the sun's surface to shame. So, what exactly are brown dwarfs? How can something that doesn't undergo nuclear fusion still shine so brightly? Let's dive deep into this astronomical puzzle. It seems scientists have come across a strange object in space, and they're not sure if it's a star or a planet. What we do know is that it's located 1,400 light years away from us, and it makes us question what we thought we knew about the universe. Let me explain the dilemma here. We can tell if something is a star or a planet by considering the object's mass or the amount of stuff it has. Stars have a lot of mass, which gives them strong gravity that squeezes them tightly. Squeezing creates high temperatures inside them, causing them to shine brightly. Planets have less mass, so their gravity is weaker. They don't experience the same squeezing or high temperatures as stars. Instead, planets shine because they reflect the light from there like our beautiful Earth does with our Sun too. And this weirdo falls somewhere in between since we consider it a brown dwarf. That's a special type of big gaseous protostars. Brown dwarfs are usually like Jupiter in terms of their atmosphere, but they are much larger in size, about 13 to 80 times. If a brown dwarf has more than 80 times the mass of Jupiter, it can start burning regular hydrogen just like a star. That's what usually makes stars shine brightly. But normally, brown dwarfs are not as hot as stars. Their inability to burn hydrogen has even earned them the nickname of failed stars. They burn at around 4,000 degrees Fahrenheit, which is cooler than most stars. But this object defies the norm. Its temperature measures an incredible 13,900 degrees Fahrenheit. Now let's put that into perspective. The hottest day in history was reported to happen in Death Valley, California, more than 100 years ago, with a temperature of 134 degrees Fahrenheit. People back then must have felt like they were melting along with everything around them. Now imagine getting closer to the sun, like taking a trip to Venus. Venus can reach insane temperatures of 860 degrees. It's not only about the distance, though. Mercury is the planet closest to the sun, but it's still colder than Venus. Venus is extremely hot due to the greenhouse effect. Did you know that Venus could have been a delightful place to live a long, long time ago? Or at least be home to any form of life? But at some point, it started to trap carbon dioxide and eventually created this thick, smoggy oven that doesn't release heat. And that's why it's so hard to explore. The longest a probe managed to last on Venus was two hours. But hey, that's longer than I can do at work, and then I melt. So yeah, then you get to the sun. Its surface burns at an incredible 9,930 degrees Fahrenheit. And what's fascinating is that this weird brown star we're talking about is hotter than that. I mean, it's not hotter than the sun's core, whose temperatures go up to 27 million degrees, but it's still very impressive and unusual for a brown dwarf to be this hot. At least, that's what everyone thought until they realized why it was happening. The brown dwarf is remarkably close to another star that falls into the category of white dwarfs. They're so close to each other that our mysterious star makes one orbit around its white dwarf friend in just 2.3 hours. And if you think this brown dwarf is hot, what would you say about Eta Carinae? It's a star located about 7,500 light years away from Earth, and it belongs to an elite group of stars we call luminous blue variables. One astronomer first noticed it in the 17th century, but back then it was just a regular medium bright star. Almost 200 years later, another astronomer was observing it. But this time, it was a very bright star, 
one of the brightest ones in the sky. A few years later, it reached the highest level of brightness in a big event called the Great Eruption. When it happened, the star could be easily seen in the night sky. It released so much light, as much as it's emitted in a supernova explosion. It remained like that for a couple of years, which is not what usually happens with exploding stars. After the party reached its peak, the star decided it was time to leave. It's still hesitating though, so it's still alive but dimmer than before. There's a nebula around Eta Carinae too. It is a shell made of gas and dust that formed during the Great Eruption. It even blocks some of the star's light. Eta Carinae is a binary star system. That means there are two stars that orbit around each other. One component has a temperature of about 26,500 degrees and the other 62,500 degrees. The main star in the Eta Carinae system, which is the more massive of the two, is a hundred times heavier than our Sun. Because of its enormous mass, scientists predict that this star may eventually explode in a powerful event known as a supernova, but not for another several thousand years. So by now you might have already guessed what the hottest thing in the universe is. Tada! A supernova. The supernova is what tells us that the life of a star has ended. We're talking about the most powerful explosions in space. They happen when a star that's between 8 and 40 times more massive than our sun flops. Its core can no longer create enough energy through a process called fusion, so the star can't even handle its own gravity. It's like a stellar burnout. Too much work a star can't handle, and its core just collapses. During a supernova, the temperatures in the star's core can get 6,000 times higher than in the core of the sun. Or sometimes, a specific type of star called a white dwarf suddenly restarts its nuclear fusion, and bam, you get a supernova again. Kepler's supernova happened at the beginning of the 17th century, and it was the last really big supernova event we directly observed from Earth. On average, supernovas in our galaxy happen three times every century. I mean, we got a smaller supernova in 1987 too, when a blue supergiant exploded in one of the Milky Way's satellite galaxies, which we know as the Large Magellanic Cloud. This explosion was so strong, people could even observe it with the unaided eye, even though it was incredibly far, 168,000 light years away from our home planet. What a topic for summer days, huh? But check this out. We can also talk about the hottest thing people have ever created, made in a surprising place, Switzerland. No, we're not talking about a super hot chocolate. A group of scientists there created a subatomic soup called a quark gluon plasma. In this experiment, the temperature got 250,000 times as hot as the sun's core. The purpose of this experiment was to recreate the conditions that existed shortly after the Big Bang, when the universe was still in a state of chaos. The universe never ceases to amaze us with its wonders, and brown dwarfs are a perfect example of its complexity. These celestial objects remind us that the lines between stars and planets aren't as clear-cut as we once thought. If you enjoyed exploring this fiery mystery, don't forget to like, share and subscribe for more mind-blowing cosmic discoveries. And as always, keep looking up, because the universe is full of stories waiting to be told.